Hey. Hello, Glenn. What's happening? How the hell are you, man? It's been forever, man. Been underground. <laughs> <laughs> underground? You're going back to your roots, Glenn? Yeah, going back to the core of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I just came out for lunch and was just about ready to get dressed to go back in when the phone rang. So here I am. Mm, here you are. And here I am in uh New York. I'm 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 about to uh do some yard work. Yeah. Work uh the leaves in the back. Cause the front yard is fairly easy because we do it like every every week we do it I do it uh, you know just use a blower but in the backyard it's, it's like accumulated is your dad still at home yeah he's still home he's being taken care of by uh, that lady from uh, Haiti she, she's been taking care right. of him she uh, uh but he just the other day it's happened before but the other day uh he was in the shower and he just like fell down in the shower. We had to, me and my brother. Uh, we, I How told, is like, your brother? Uh, which one? The one that got into trouble. Oh, him. Uh, they both got into trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do usually at that age. Um, with the the one that that caught that had a uh, DWI in over here. He caught a DWI a while ago and yeah. you know, he was going to school up there in Canada but he just he came back a couple of few months ago and uh because he had to do community service here. So now he's back here, uh I guess he may go next semester back up to Canada but right right now he's looking for a job and um so he could, you know, put some money in his pocket. But I'm not sure. I don't know if the if the government will let him in after. Yeah. Cause he was charged and everything, and he was charged with a misdemeanor. So it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and what so, about uh, you? Are you still in uh, the plumbing business oh, or this, this, in the this, can this sorting is... business? <laughs> the can so right now. I have. I've been out of work for like a month, and it's um. I should be working in hopefully a week. It'll be like a weekend job doing moving furniture. Well, what, what happened with that guy is he, he just didn't have work. And I, you know, every time I call him, he never picks up. So, you know, I just said, forget this guy. I'm not going to call him. And, you know, I, right now I've been, uh, the, you know, the unemployment office, uh, they, they seem to have opportunities. So I've been... Um, I have like an appointment. To You're me. breaking up. I have an appointment in the future um, with the unemployment office. They have like uh, like on-site recruitment, different locations, and they have uh, career opportunities. And uh, well, yeah. you know, they have some plumbing stuff, uh, plumbing-related stuff. So I was thinking about going to see them pursue that. So I've been so, like, poor. I've just been staying home. But, yeah. You know, it's, uh, you, you can go, you can go, it's not healthy being home all the time. Sometimes no. it can drive you crazy. And, uh, but I noticed that uh, I've been, like, every day I'll do, like, an hour or more in the backyard doing the leaves. And I, and I find that to be kind of therapeutic for me. You know, you, you learn different things. <laughs> Must be helpful to your mom as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two birds with one stone. You get to, but uh, yeah, I, I learn. You know, just I, you learn. It, my backyard is nothing really compared to the farm, but you know, in that small little space, you know, I'm analyzing, observing. You know, just like you know how the system works. Like you know, when I'm taking these leaves away, and yeah. In the back is like these thorny bushes that grow, and they just they just get in the way. There's so many of them, and you know it's that whole concept. You know, you don't focus on the on the actual thorns, but the 
where they're growing from. Yeah. <laughs> Cut the root out. Um, the closer you are, and when you know, when you and, and it's interesting with the trees, like the closer you are to that, um, when you go to that root and you pull it out, it's a whole other. It's like a whole. It's like a hit, whole hidden world. It's like so much yeah. of it. All these roots. And I guess that's why, you know, they use that. That's part of the reason why they they use that symbol, uh, the, the Norse, Norse mythology with the um, big tree. Yeah. I guess so. But, yeah, I know you're, you're, you're finding uh, stuff over there, artifacts. Like, well, uh, I, right now I'm uh, basically... Um, laying out how this area uh, could contain under the house so many stones that when you break them open contain a um, a quartz-like, glass-like material that would in fact be a transmitter of electromagnetism. The only place one could find these stones would be uh, uh, 3,900 kilometers below ground because that was about the time in uh, the ancient history of the planet when it was hit by a number of meteorites carrying this and most uh, crystal uh, glass-like structures are that deep underground. The only other place you find them is where there is a volcano that brought them up from there and spewed them on the land. However, I don't believe there's any volcano in the area, and certainly not one that could pile these stones in this area in particular. If uh, one stands uh, above a magnetic field, uh, you can imagine that the glands in your body, which contain water, most of the water, fresh water, has some mineral content, um, iron being the principal one. There would be an effect on the glandular structure of the body that would drag the glands out of their normal position, pile them up and confuse their activities. And if, uh, if you read up on the background of electromagnetism, uh, a guy by the name of Michael Faraday in the early 1800s, who wasn't a, uh, a physicist or a scientist per se, uh, did um, investigations in electromagnetism. And his suggestion was that it is um, very dangerous to health of anyone who stands within the magnetic field. Now, for it, Basically, to become a magnetic field, uh, it has to have water flowing uh, by, which underground uh, in this area is normal because there's a slant leading down towards the creek behind the woods at the back. So coming from the west, and going east, water is flowing, uh, and the clay, stony area underground is always damp. Uh, hydro used to have a, um, a rod 
which they put on the roof of houses uh, in case there would be a lightning strike bringing electricity into the electrical circuit of the house. Over time, they discovered or came to some decision that the lightning rod could be placed underground and tied to your um, box, your electric box. And what they did was they reversed the rod, which on the roof pointed up, the end of it being sharp, and pounded it into the ground going down and said, if there is a surcharge in your electrical circuit, it will be grounded. It will go into the ground. Well, what happens is basically they send a surcharge. It goes into the ground. It charges these stones up as an electromagnet and reverses the process sending an electromagnetic field up the wire and your hydro box is linked to your telephone box and magnetic fields run better on a very fine wiring system uh, closer to what the telephone line um, that come into your house use rather than electrical lines and therefore create magnetic fields all over your house through on the basement area through the electrical circuit and on the upper floors through the telephone circuits. Now if you are standing close to it, what it does is there is a, a illness, um, an injury done to the body called hydroseal. And that basically is a hernia in the stomach that drags everything down into the scrotum. That's what I got. And I got it during a period that I was completely um, relocated from the RV to the basement because I had to handle uh, the wood fire in the house, the two, one on the ground floor and the one in the basement uh, over the winter time, and I slept in the basement. While I was digging underground, I found the traces of an electromagnetic field manually created by whoever built the foundation for a house that was to be prefab and brought in. So not necessarily the same people. And under the place where I slept in the basement, the floor uh, in, a, in one certain place is about one inch thick while the floor, generally speaking, in the basement is about eight inches thick. And when I got under the concrete and looked up, I discovered that whoever built the foundation set up a series of these boulders that have... Um, glass-like structures internally 
because when you break them open, they break up at that spot because they don't hold together the same manner as the granite or the basalt rock. Uh, and, and you can see them all over the place where you break them open. But they stack them in a way leading from the grounding rod put in by hydro at a later date, I would imagine, because this is lower in the ground. And these boulders, which are um, plentiful, are obviously placed by hand under what would become the foundation and fixed it up so that from one rock to another, uh, the magnetic field would travel leading upwards to where, just where the foundation begins, they put up a pointed rock and covered it with gravel which meant that when you poured cement, it would not pour cement in that place where the pointed rock was, but on top of the gravel that surrounded it. And it would be gravel designed to hold the magnetic field with space for water to travel through that gravel. Of course, when I removed the rock, the gravel fell out, and I could look inside the foundation floor. And by knocking with a hammer on the bottom just to hear the sound, Jennifer went to the basement, and could identify where the sound was coming from. And that place is right beside the bed. Now, obviously, at the beginning, that was not done for me. I didn't live here, 1972. However, the man and woman who lived here died here. The children they have uh, can be best described as having uh, different levels of mental handicap. If they lived in the basement, it would be worse than if they lived upstairs. However, upstairs is not free of that. Upstairs has two rooms on the top floor one, and with a bathroom in between, and yet the attic which is the only attic I've ever seen like that in my life, is divided into the same spaces as the rooms below, which basically means an attempt to contain both in a room and in the space above it the electromagnetic field. And the worst one is in the room occupied by the uh, the owners of the house, the biggest room. I don't know if you slept there or not. Yeah, I think you did in, in the closet, mm -hmm. the one with the closet. Okay. And the design of the ceiling is Tudor, 
Huh. And Tudor is a basic religious group that existed in Great Britain at a time around 1500 or so. And it is basically a design of splitting areas into smaller areas using wood and not basically having all the areas the same size. They vary in size, and once you study it, you find out that it's basically designing a code that if you understand the Tudor system, um, you can read the basic story that it's trying to tell you. What's the structure of the, the Tudor system like? Hey? How would you describe the, that structure of the, the Tudors? Well, it, it's um, got styrofoam ceiling tiles. And styrofoam contains on one side of it, like, like a cooler with uh, beer or soft drinks, contains within it either hot or cold, depending on what you put in it, but it has no interaction with the outside. Um, the lattice work that divides the spaces uh, uses beams and smaller uh, wood to m make out the layout. In the um, 1500s, Tudor activity was basically a life style based upon a, an understanding of religion and uh, was basically eliminated, I think, at around the time of Henry VIII. When, when uh, Henry VIII broke with the Vatican and outlawed Christian activity that, that reported to the Vatican, many of the Anglophones of that period moved out of England so that they wouldn't have to become Church of England under Henry VIII, some of which came to Canada and established um, at least a passage through Newfoundland. In my understanding of history, they are descendants, the Tudors are descendants of uh, German uh, background who would have been descendants at a much earlier time of uh, Israeli background. They were the genetic engineers of their day. And um, they would have come to Canada and manufactured a race of people uh, which they call Cajuns and set up in, in what is now Nova Scotia, and they spoke French. And they, once they had been uh, tested there, they were evicted, much like the Israelis had been evicted from Israel a thousand years earlier. Uh, they were <clears throat> evicted, uh, and ended up mostly living uh, in the adjoining states of the United States, like Maine and um, Vermont, that area, or anywhere along the St. Lawrence. But the majority went south and created New Orleans, uh, since they spoke French. And uh, 
when they were evicted from that area, a different group of people was installed there, most of them Scottish, and that's why they call it New Scotland, Nova Scotia, New Scotland. And the French people that had been designed for that area were then placed in Quebec. There is no doubt that their religion became Catholicism linked to the Vatican, and the head group uh, became the Grey Nuns, who are the genetic engineers manufacturing foundlings. They tell people that somebody left kids at the front door, but in fact, there were children they made. So, I saw in, a, in the older post, post, I was reading it yesterday, something uh, they were referred to as a Viking foundling. Yeah, well, the Vikings basically came um, earlier and laid out the areas in which different foundling groups would, in fact, be positioned in the future. And uh, much much like um, um, Lawrence of Arabia did for the Arabian Peninsula, you know, went and, and uh, for England laid out <coughs> a pattern of where, say, Saudi Arabia would be, where Iraq would be, where Syria boundaries would be, where the um, uh, Kurds would live, and uh, the Emirates, and all of that, based upon his view of things, uh, unfortunately not based upon the tribal networks who lived there at the time, who really got into wars <coughs> ever since these lines were laid down and continue today with with the wars that are going on in Syria and Iraq and Iran and all that area, formerly known as uh, Persia. I just recently saw, actually, that guy, Bourdain, just had a show, a recent yeah. one in, in Iran. So I, I have no doubt I understand what they did here from the time of the Vikings right through the coming of uh, the French, uh, followed by the English, and how they surrounded an area they would call the United States um, with uh, Spanish people taking charge of what we call Mexico, um, bilingual approach to things in Canada with Quebec and Manitoba surrounding Ontario and creating, you know, divisions based on language and religion, that kind of stuff. Um, hey, I joined your call. Now and... they kill people. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hey, well, they by, by setting up electromagnetic fields, they can predetermine the lifespan of the people in that area. And therefore... Since uh, genetics is used to manufacture task orientation based upon things like personality traits and, and uh, triggers, uh, they can manipulate the lifespan of the people. And according to some people that I've talked to in that genetics business, the usual lifespan of today's body uh, 
should be 120 years, but its uh, average is between 75 and 80. And it's simply because of things like the magnetic fields that the average ice age, uh, the average uh, lifespan is uh, limited to that period in time. So they don't have to pay uh, through government sources, old age pension to a large population. So they they basically have made it about 10 years after retirement. And now they're talking about raising the retirement age to 70 since lifespan is moving up to 80. So... If, if you have a society and its makeup is task-orientated gene pool, you could put boundaries around it and call that a state. Or a number of them, like glands in the body, could be called uh, a team or a league uh, which has many task orientations side by side in a place you call a country. All of it has a foundation, and the foundation is foundlings. So when they came from England to Canada, and establish themselves, they called the place Newfoundland. And found land for foundations. And then over to the north, across the water of the St. Lawrence, uh, they got another place they called Labrador. Labrador is made up of lab, labor, or laboratory, labor and Tories, and in, contained in there is the word A-rod, and the rod they're talking about is the rod that used to be a lightning rod, in the Bible is called Aaron's rod carried by um, what's his name Moses Moses's brother Aaron and you'll see that the interpretation of the activity when he throws it on the floor it jumps around as if it was electric they call it serpent-like when when he throws it on the floor he's basically threaten, threatening to electrocute somebody and of course the Ark of the Covenant which is supposed to be a box weighing 87 pounds carried by four men with two uh, rods of 16 feet so that they would be kept at least four feet away from the box as they carried it. Um, the wings on top with lightning traveling from one to the other suggest that what you have there is an electromagnetic system. When God promised never to kill everybody by a flood, he never promised not to kill everybody. Just the means of dying would be expanded away from a flood. And the closest thing to kill people other than being drowned, which is they call a soup. The closest thing would be 
electromagnetism. Oh, um, Dana's on on uh, on the line. Yeah. I'm trying to say hello hey. for you. Hey, how's it going? Hey there. <laughs> How you doing, Dana? Ah, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Just listening in. So that's what uh, the arc and spark. Yeah. Okay. All linked. <laughs> and it's, you know, without um, com- comparing knowledge to uh, wealth, um, there is a, a comparison that's required there. And the knowledge being derived from digging under this house um, is certainly worth more than any worldly treasure. And, of course, you can't tell people what you found because they've been programmed not to receive. And they haven't heard it on CNN yet. So they wouldn't believe anyways. But the way human beings have been changed in the last 6,000 years is basically uh, matching a program that allows them to gradually change from generation to generation to generation uh, and therefore not be noticed by anyone as a change while it's happening. It all uh, happens with a tweaking of the genetic pool um, every 20 years or so and in batches of 80 to 100 years. So no one who is not aware of the context of their life um, and and who they are and why they do the things they do, uh, being linked to genetic engineering, would would never come to that conclusion. Although some of us have managed to break out of the program and look around us and say the world is not what we're told it is. And there is an explanation for things that happen uh, where someone says, this guy went in and committed a mass murder in a school I never would have believed he would do something like that. His personality is so different. These people don't understand the trigger mechanism that exists and that can be put out on radio, for example, by the media, that causes an individual to respond to a program inserted in them before birth and and then uh, return to normal afterwards and say, I don't know why I did this. Yeah. And people will say it's demon in possession and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, so they, you know, I, looking at this stuff, I've learned they can, you know, they have all types of techniques, specialized techniques to totally, like, screw with somebody's mind, you know, give them different personalities, uh, multiple personalities, uh, make somebody a killer, make, it can make anybody anything they want, basically. Religion, yeah. media... Politics, health care, uh, all of these things 
have their hand on the gun and can pull different triggers at different times. Yeah, so. They, uh... That's what we live in. And right now, the turn has come for a majority of North Americans to be dismissed. Cancer, mental health problems, heart conditions, arthritis, um, strokes. All of these are linked to magnetic activity. Your glands being pulled down. You can't see the magnet because it's on the other side of the skin like you can do with coins and a sheet of paper. Mm. But the effect is to draw everything down. And that's why they call it depression. How long do you Once think it's... you're depressed, then there is a physical manifestation or a mental manifestation of that depression. Yeah. For women, their breasts sink, topple downwards, or the, the buildup inside their chest cavity drops down and becomes a wide ass. For men, um, why do you think we have all these pills, Cialis and, yeah, and uh -huh. uh, Viagra and all of that? It's because we're in an age of the destruction of men. They've just finished the age of the conversion of women to women, and now the need is to destroy men's ability to procreate. And if Viagra and Cialis are selling the way they say they are, it has to be that most of the men are suffering from a magnetic end product created by their hydro company and carried around by their telephone company. I have instructed the people at Ontario Hydro of my findings. And the net result is that they have invented a debt uh, on my hydro bill. I've told them that they're being charged with mail fraud, that they say that I owe four to $5,000 on hydro, which I pay regularly every month, the amount agreed to from the time I moved in here 14 years ago and um, on their budget plan have most of the time arrived in uh, January where they send me a smaller bill because I've overpaid the year before. But all of a sudden now they're saying that I haven't paid the bill, the real bill. And I said, I've paid the bill based upon what you sent me and for the electricity that I use. You want me to pay the bill for the electromagnetic system you've set up under the house to kill me. And I ain't going to. And they said they're going to cut me off. 
unless I send payment not to them, but to a third party through Western Union. What? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. In writing. In writing, they said this. Wow. Yeah. I, I already see, Glenn, based off like the past experience you have with other groups, this could be like just a long, drawn out. You break it up. Based off other you know, past experience of what I've seen, you know, problems that you have with, you know, Ma Bell and uh, the Canadian government, this looks like another just long, drawn out battle. It's got, it could be between you and them. Another. Um. Hang on a second. Jennifer is going out. I gotta say something to her. I'm back. Sorry about that. No. So, uh, um, could you, uh, if you can, because um, I remember you said you had like uh, a list of like all the. Uh, the crimes or, or the investigation that you're doing to all the yeah. twenty the, some. Oh, I don't know if you wanted to list them so people could hear. Um, well, my computers are not in in use right now. Tom has moved into the room and has done something that uh, has affected my computers. So until I get a chance with the time to uh, go through them to find out what it is that's been done, I can't access it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not something major, um, but I just don't have the, the time to devote to that when I'm doing what I'm doing now under the house. There is a possibility um, that uh, the, Vi <coughs> the Vikings chose this place as um, <coughs> the headquarters of the Weeman uh, genetic engineers who work uh, work out of the Vatican. I don't know if you're familiar with Vikings, but Vikings were, in fact, uh, paid soldiers yeah, who been. basically went out and did things on behalf of whoever was financing them. And the financiers were the Vatican. Mm. And probably the nuns at the Vatican. Now, according to the information I received from the cell, of course, this area of Ontario is to be Valhalla. We've discussed that before. Um, the um, place on the east side of Highway 31 going into Ottawa is for the military called In Her Jar. And this side of uh, 416 um, is, is for the females and their genetic engineering. And the middle part will be uh, Odin's area forget the name of it in Valhalla, great meeting hall with a roof of shields linked to Canadian Shield. And this area, according to the cell, rather than becoming a genetic engineering place for women, has been chosen to be the site for 
the third temple of Jerusalem. You know that in 1947, Israeli people, Hebrews, they were called, because they brewed their population out of a cauldron of genetic engineering run by the blue nuns called Carmelites. They, in fact, um, were trying, they were given the authority to reestablish Israel by the United Nations in 1947. They established a country in 1948 so that there would be a, another movement in the future for the real promised land, and that the real promised land had not been created in 1948. In 1949, Newfoundland and Labrador joined Canada to make it the country it is today, which makes it eligible to be the new promised land. And it is believed that certain items such as the Ark of the Covenant box with the electromagnetic uh, equipment in it is in fact buried here on the farm. And may be the main driver of all of the stones that were laid down around it a thousand years ago. They came, they did it, and they left. And then they sent a group of people to Newfoundland and to Quebec and then expanded Canada with uh, Frenchmen, Englishmen, and then began to say we would be a multicultural society. What they needed to create this multicultural society is to limit immigration by those gene pools that are not on the list of the things they need for the future and to bring in those gene pools that are what they need for the future. So when they bring in immigrants today, the border security limits access to those people who are properly genetically engineered. If they come as refugees, the first thing they do is send them to a doctor to take swabs and whatever they need to define the genetics. could be blood. And if they don't fit the proper genetic background, they're not let in. If they do, they're let in. Meanwhile, they're killing off or mentally handicapping people with Alzheimer's and, and that kind of uh, mental illness who are here for past reasons, work that needed to be done in ancient times and is no longer a priority, those people are being killed off. I look around the neighborhood here, and um, 
knee problems seems to be the major physical problem, followed by heart attacks and strokes. And mental illness in the children born around here seems to be rampant. Jennifer, with her background in medical practitioner, and as a, an administrative person, is a major threat to them. They don't mind nurses who do what they're told to do, but anyone who knows Jennifer knows that she always needs an answer to the question she puts is why. Why? I don't believe it. Why? You know, because her job as an administrative nurse is to get to the bottom of things. And that really disturbs people. Of course, I have the same illness. And when you put two together who have to have answers to the question why, and the, the why keeps popping up as a path that has two directions at the end of it, just like the letter in the alphabet, it clarifies given the option to do what the system wants you to do because you're programmed to do that. But should you say why, then what you're doing is questioning your program. And if you keep saying why long enough, you break out of your program. And you start doing what appears to be natural and normal and more in line with reality than the things that have been expected from you in the past. Nobody can claim <clears throat> that they've escaped the system prior to living it out because they didn't understand there was a process at the time. But now, once you pass 40, you become a danger to the system if you question the things they've told you are the truth, mm. such as, Life began with Adam and Eve in 4000 B.C. Anybody with a half a brain can look around and see that there were people on the planet living lives for at least 100,000 years before 4000 B.C. And that 16,000 years of Ice Age allowed them to hide that fact to those who don't bother going beyond accepting what is just laid out in front of them. Reality is that for at least 100,000 years, people were living on the planet and philosophers and thinkers worked out the answer to all of the questions that were posed to them. But those answers have been kept hidden from us. 
the original people being small in numbers, comparatively speaking to us, could not experiment to prove their hypothesis. Because in order to run a laboratory, you have to repeat the experiment so many times that if you don't have the guinea pigs to do it with, you're not going to be able to say, my hypothesis is now a theory, a theory being proven fact. But what they did know is that they knew how to increase the population, how to make more people, and how in or in a period of time predetermined by them, they could place the guinea pigs on the planet, let them live through war, pestilence, famine, and disease, and die, and continually replace them with a tweaked version so that they would learn the effects of all their hypothesis and turn it into proven theory. Seven billion people or so have lived. Seven billion people are now on the planet. In the space between seven and eight, 50% um, percent having died and lived, total 14 to 16 million combined have provided all the guinea pigs necessary, and now it's time to start over again, but this time with having What's the task for the future? How can I achieve a population and how many do I need that will fill that task? And how do I get rid of the 7 to 8 billion people that are alive today in a relatively short period of time? 2,100 years being a relatively short period of time. So the word Jesus, he's us, basically starts the project of reversing the population movement forward. It can't stop on a dime. It has to continue growing until you reach a rate where it slows and stops and then reverses the direction. I put it to you that we are now in reversal. And that between now and the next 2,000 years, there has to be a cleansing of everybody on the planet, the major move will be done this century. The one kind of person they want for the future is someone who will travel into space and land on a... Um, They call it a, an asteroid, just like they're doing with a machine today. Yeah. Therefore, that person, see that that machine took a journey and is still within the solar system of ten years. 
to get out of the solar system is 34 years. So I put it to you that what they want is a person who will be raised on Earth for six years, placed in a capsule, sent out into space, travel 34 years, and at the age of 40, their second birth will occur by landing on an asteroid and report back their findings. That person has to have the appearance of a woman, much better marketing body if you're dealing with strangers. It has to have the strength of a male, and it has to have the contents of 24-7 communications equipment. That means they can perform the experiments and report in real time what they have found. That's what they want. Change back in time the structure of the human body to that of a hermaphrodite. To modify that body so that it can give birth to a single child through a process of genetically engineering one's self. Therefore, the male aspects of rebirth have to be there in that body. And that requires that the female today, which used to be number nine, were converted to number sixes, and they're talking about a new one is number ten, a ten, a can a ten, that new one has to be uh, modified in the form of a chicken. A chicken basically difference with human beings or other animals is that the uh, pee and excrement come out of the same place. The more liquid approach to splatter, flirt, and it contains certain medicines for the chicks who will not be breastfeeding. But that's not quite necessary with women in the same way as it is with chickens, since women have two breasts, and one can be devoted to breastfeeding the child that is born, and the other one can be modified for 24-7 communications technologies. The city of Ottawa has just basically allowed a return to the Canadian Football League of a team that they now called the Red Blacks. <laughs> Red Blacks is a name no one expected and no one can understand why someone would call a team Red Black. The reason is the same as why Baltimore calls their uh, baseball team Orioles. Alter more, Baltimore, Orioles, Areola.
the military put out for Remembrance Day a poppy. It is shaped in the shape of a areola around the nipple. And the colors are red black. They call it poppy. What it called the daddy for all. Poppy is just a symbol of the future communications network. They say, the military is they, that all the funds collected from the sale of poppies does not go into the uh, funds, usual funds, for veterans. It goes in a separate bank account and is available to the families of veterans who have survived loss of life by their military person or loss of limb by the military person. And they basically pay for such things as, uh, say, the wife and child live in a house with a leaky roof. They'll put on a new roof. They'll build a um, change to the front walkway so that someone in a wheelchair can go into the house. So it's all designed for family but mostly to help mother and child. They are the nurturers. The mothers are the nurturers. They nurture through an areola and a nipple. Design red black. Everybody in a hospital that has to report to the doctor and the hospital what it is that patient number one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, um, who occupies one, two, three, four, five number bed, um, has done today and what medicine has been given to them and what therapies have been given to them have to be inserted into a computer. That computer uh, puts out the documents necessary for the hospital and for the nurses who do the patient care. But then they have to go through a second process in the hospital. They have to type out exactly what caused the patient to arrive at the hospital, what the patient suffers from, what medical procedures were done, what medicine the patient is given on a daily basis and what therapy the patient is given on a daily basis and at the end what is the end result did the patient get better and walk out is the patient still a patient and they're still working at it. Is the patient classified as having something that can't be fixed and therefore will have to be transferred to a different type home? 
for the uncurable, or did the patient die? All of that has to be done on separate forms and sent off daily to an email address in Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland, which of course is linked to genetic mm -hmm. engineering of Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Maryland is the place in the United States designed to contain all the memory, memory, memory. And a file gives them knowledge that can be used in the future to make something occur through the medical process. Where if you want the patient to die, this is the suggested course. If you want the patient to recuperate, this is the subject, the suggested course. If you want the patient to not be able to remember, this is the course. But they have the complete knowledge gathered up by every nurse in the entire country. Down the street is the headquarters of the Old Navy. They used to call them Phoenicians. They now call them U.S. Navy. And the U.S. Navy is the one planning for space. Now, if all the medical knowledge is contained in virtually the same place as the actual people who put it into practice, you can be sure that their database gives them all the answers they need about what they have to do over what period in time. And that information has been gathered by the Phoenicians who lived in a place called Tyre, which is in the Middle East, called Lebanon today. Leaders of Lebanon <coughs> does not necessarily mean trees. Could mean, like Johnny Appleseed, someone who lays down the seed of future apple trees. The cedars of Lebanon, the Phoenicians, live on peninsulas, mostly, so that at one end they can block the land access, and at the other end they can escape in boats. They are responsible for collecting information. They became the Vikings. Phoenicians means they speak phonetically, not grammatically. Phonetically means they set up communications networks like the telephone. So 
Ni Shins. Shin, C I A N. Cain. Cain the Builder. It is quite likely that upon the cleansing of the planet, starting with the Lu at the Su, which is really not the beginning, but really the beginning of the end, since they have done all of the war, pestilence, famine, and disease stuff already. This one is the soup, which is in the hands of Mother Superior, the superintendents of the police. They used to call it potage in French. The age of the pot. Are we not living in the age of pot? Yep. That's why they're bringing back marijuana. (laughs) Yeah. That's the whole uh, message. So what is an areola... Four, if not what Dr. Wilder Penfield was suggesting Amen. when he said, people can have a damaged brain, but somehow, some way, the knowledge that it contained that has been removed by the damage is over time, rebuilt in what is left of the brain. And if you wait long enough, although it's not as perfect as the original, you can get to remember the lost knowledge over time. Where does that lost knowledge reside? It resides in the areola and the nipple. And that's that's why men still have areolas and nipples, even though they don't have the day-to-day use of breastfeeding. But they do need a equivalent to a portable hard drive that can be used to download the information that's been lost out of the brain. Do you, um, what does that mean uh, when you see, like, uh, I know it's a lot of women, females today, they, they pierce it. Is that the system trying to uh, hinder that? That backup space by making it a trend to for females to pierce the the nipple. Are they saying? I have something? no idea. All I know is piercing is linked to the system. Yeah. And piercing ear lobes, piercing noses, piercing belly buttons, piercing um, areolas, all would have a different meaning, but it would suggest that they are in a certain group. Mrs. Bush's name is Barbara Pierce. Hmm. 
he came through the rye off of the end of your island. <laughs> yeah. In any event, my friends, Tom has gone to the hospital. Yeah. And oh, really? he may be calling me any time now. So I'll have to drop this for now. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Yeah. And if you call and there's no hydro, I don't know if the phone will work or not. We'll see. <laughs>